Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice radical equation. We have the square root of 2 minus the square root of 2 minus x equals x, and we're going to be solving for x values. I'm going to show you three different methods. Hopefully you like them. Please let me know what you think. And if you know of, of any other method that could be applied, uh, please let us know in the comment section down below. So let's start with the first method. Notice that we have two radicals here. Uh, I'm going to start with the innermost, this one. 2 minus x, as you know, if we're looking for real solutions, then what's inside the radical needs to be greater than or equal to 0. This means x is less than or equal to 2. At the same time, the whole radical, the bigger radical, the outermost radical is equal to x, and the result of square rooting a real number right if the result is a real number if x is a real number then it's square uh, the square root of something that equals x needs to be greater than or equal to zero so we have this and that so together that kind of gives us an interval x needs to be between zero and two inclusive but let's dig a little bit more because we have two radicals so we have to be careful what about this entire expression here under the outermost radical or the outer i guess because there's only two I don't need the most. So 2 minus the square root of 2 minus x, since it's under the radical, needs to be greater or equal to 0 as well. This implies that 2 minus x under the radical needs to be less than or equal to 2. And at this point, you can square both sides and do it, uh, find something for x. Let's do it. That will give us 2 minus x is less than or equal to 4. Or put the x on the right and make sure you don't divide by a negative number x is going to be greater than or equal to negative 2. But this is already satisfied. You know why? Because x is greater or equal to 0, so we don't really need this. Okay, there's another way to look at it. Now let me show you. This is really cool because if you're working with inequalities in the domains and ranges and things like that, you should definitely know these tricks. For example, uh, the square root of 2 minus x. We know that x is greater or equal to 0, so you're kind of subtracting a non-negative number from 2. That is going to be less than or equal to 2, so its square root is going to be less than or equal to square root of 2. So in other words, 2 minus something. Think about x as a very small positive number like 0 0.1. Its square root obviously is going to be less than the square root of 2, right? And also we know that square root of 2 is less than 2 because it's the square root of 4 if x is greater or equal to 0. Of course, I need to kind of um, write that down. So from here we directly see that, okay, uh, the radical is less than 2, which means uh, this is already going to be greater or equal to 0. So it's already satisfied. You don't need to check it, but you should check it. Anyways, so let's go ahead and write down what we found then. We have x being greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 2. Under these conditions, can I abbreviate as UTC? Under these conditions, we have the following. Let's go ahead and write down the original Let's go ahead and write down the original square root of 2 minus the square root of 2 minus x equals x. I'm going to go ahead and square both sides because that's usually what we do with radical equations. And then outer radical is going to disappear as a result. Let's put the non-radicals together and the radical on the other side. And then square both sides one more time. You sometimes have to do this more than once. And now this gives us 4 minus 4x squared plus x to the fourth equals 2 minus x. Notice that the square root and the square disappears, or cancel out, I should say. And now this gives us a quartic equation, don't, but don't be scared because it's an easy, a nice equation. Subtract 2 from 4, it's going to give you a positive 2. And why is this a nice quartic? You know why? Because it's factorable. Let me show you how. We're going to group these two and those two x squared times x squared minus 4 plus 1 times x plus 2. By the way, x squared minus 4 is a difference of two squares. Remember, a squared minus b squared can be factored as a plus b times a minus b, right? From algebra, hopefully you know that. So we can kind of write this as x squared times x plus 2 multiplied by x minus 2. And the second term is 1 times x plus 2. Now we have, we have x plus 2 as a common factor. We can pull it out. And then inside, we're going to have x squared times this. So that'll be x cubed minus 2x squared plus 1. Awesome. And you know what? 
there's good news because the cubic is factorable too. Isn't that amazing? Remember, in most of my videos, I always talk about these things when it comes to solving polynomial equations. You should always check two things. First, the sum of the coefficients. Second, the sum of the evens and the odds. Because if the odds and evens are equal, then negative one is a solution. If the sum of the coefficients is zero, then x equals one is a solution. From factor theorem, that makes sense, right? So in this case, that happens to be the case because look, one minus two plus one equals zero. So we know that x equals one is a potential solution. But how do you find the other one? Let's go ahead and set this equal to zero first. By the way, from here, we get x equals negative two, right? You hopefully know that already. So now let's go ahead and um, factor it. But there are three terms. When there are three terms, and you know that x equals one is a solution, which means by the factor theorem, x equals one is a solution. Uh, you can manipulate this expression, right? You have to split up something. And in this case, since two uh, x squared has a minus, I mean, x squared has a minus two, I'm gonna write it as minus one minus one. And then that actually gives us something factorable because if you think about it, uh, by the way, this should be an x cubed. I'm like, what is going on here? Come on, x squared times x minus one and then minus x squared minus one. And guess what? That's the difference of two squares again. So let's go ahead and factor it out, x plus one, x minus one. And now we're gonna take out x minus one as a common factor. We get x squared minus. Now notice that we, we took out this one. So we have x plus one in parentheses, or if I can just distribute the minus sign, I'll get that. You like it so far? Okay, this is very interesting because actually it has a golden flavor. Have you noticed that? Remember, x equals negative two seems to be a solution, but guess what? We need to check our work, right? Because these are radical equations. You never know what's gonna happen with them. So now from here, we get x equals one. We already knew that, right? Because uh, the sum of the coefficients. And here, if you set it equal to zero, this is actually a golden equation, isn't it? The golden ratio. So x is gonna be negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus four ac, which is root five divided by two. That's what I mean by golden ratio because we get this and we get that. Guess which one is the golden ratio? Great, now, here's some problems that we need to take a look at. We need to check these solutions. They may not be valid. They may be extraneous from squaring both sides, right? So how can I check? Uh, one way to do it, which is kind of like the longer way to do it, is plug it in, <laughs> obviously. Do you want to plug in some radical here? I don't think so, but you could definitely be my guess if you want to do it. Another method, I mean, if it integers, it should be fairly easy, like plug in one, you can easily quickly see that it's a solution, right? I mean, so one would be good. What about negative two? Negative two also seems to be a solution, right? Because think about it. If x is equal to negative two, that's gonna be a square root of two minus square root of four, but square root of four is two, two minus two is equal to, uh-oh, it didn't work, zero. Okay, that's not a solution, Never mind. But if you check the radicals, you can find out. Without checking how do we do it, we check the domain. Remember, we found the domain for uh, a certain reason, so our x values have to be between zero and two. That's a good reason to reject most of these solutions because if you think about it, x equals one is definitely valid, but if you think about one minus root five over two, that's less than zero, it's not gonna work. And one plus root five over two is probably greater than two, isn't it? Is it? I don't know. Anyways, so here's what I wanna show you, two more methods, and then I'll also show you a graph, which is really, really cool. A cool way to look at it uh, is through graphs. Okay, the second method, again, I'm gonna write down the original problem, just in case you came in the middle of this. And then here, the second method works as follows. I'm gonna go ahead and use substitution because substitution is awesome, and that's one of my favorite methods. Uh-oh. So this, I'm gonna call y the square root of two minus x, I'm gonna set it equal to y. And as a result, from here, I'm getting the square root of two minus y equals x. Do you see the symmetry? Okay, to see better, let's go ahead and square both sides. And here, two. And then we're gonna do the following. We're gonna negate the second expression, in other words, multiply by negative one, because the equality is still maintained, right? And then add these two, two equations. In other words, I'm subtracting these two equations, but I didn't wanna say that. We get y minus x equals y squared minus x squared. Does that look familiar? Yes, difference of two squares. You see how important it is. If you ask me two very important formulas, I would say one of them is the 
difference of two squares. The other one is probably the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, one from algebra, one from geometry. Number theory, I don't know. Maybe Euler's, um, what is it called? Uh, Fermat's little theorem, maybe. I don't know. So, so we have this expression being equal to zero, and from here we can factor out a y minus x, then y plus x minus one equals zero. From here we get y equals x, or y equals one minus x. Plug it in, and you're gonna get the exact same equation, so I'm not gonna go over it, and you can do the rest. Third method is really, really a cool method, but I want you to think about it as I go over the third method. Is this valid? Is this always gonna work, right? Okay, now, notice that x is equal to this, right? Yeah, it's just a radical. And this is also x. So why not replace x with this on the left-hand side? Make sense? So in other words, I'm gonna be replacing the x inside the radical with the x itself, which is this whole thing. So the square root of two minus the square root of two minus x, basically this is replacing x. Let me show you what replaced x so that you can uh, make sense out of it. This replaced x, okay? Make sense? All right, we didn't replace it with x, we replaced x with that. Okay, cool. And if you keep doing this, you're gonna get something interesting like this. Square root of two minus the square root of two minus the square root of two dot 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 all the way up to, and that's equal to x. x doesn't change, but we get nested uh, radicals. Wow, this is crazy, right? And the way to do it is if the whole thing is x, this is the same as the whole thing, so it's x, we get two square root of two minus x equals x, two minus x is x squared, and then from here you get x squared plus x minus two equals zero, right? And then you can just find the solutions from here. I think x equals one and x equals negative two. As you know, negative two is not gonna work, so x equals one, happens to be the only solution. But what happened to the radical, like the golden ratio and all that stuff? What happened, it just disappeared? We did a little bit of uh, hocus pocus, abracadabra, maybe math and magic. And here's the graph of our function. Notice that there seems to be only one intersection point. That's a straight line. We have an increasing function, so on and so forth. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know, don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.